Okay, sorry. <laughs> All right, good uh, morning, everyone. I'm San Francisco Mayor London Breed, and I'm excited to be here at Footprint with Michael, the owner of Footprint, uh, with our Captain Ransford and our Assessor Recorder, Joaquin Torres, the supervisor of this community, Gordon Marr, as well as Kate Sofis with the Office of Economic and Workforce Development. So many people who work hard to help support our small businesses because we know that despite what has happened during this pandemic, so many of our small businesses have been suffering in San Francisco. The cost of doing business, the ability to find a storefront and go through the city's bureaucratic process to get open in the first place has really changed our city as we know it. And so oftentimes during the springtime, we're celebrating small businesses in San Francisco, but we need to do a better job of putting our money where our mouth is when we talk about supporting small businesses. I still go to the same dry cleaner that I've been going to since I was a kid. I still go to the dentist, same dentist that I've been going to since I've had teeth. I still go to the same place to get my nails done when I could afford to get them done. And it's an important part of the spirit of San Francisco. We love our neighborhood shops and restaurants and businesses, and we want to do everything we can to support them. And this pandemic has made life very challenging. I remember when I was walking around in the Castro, there are a lot of businesses that I frequent because they're close to where I live. And one day I was walking and I noticed something different. There were a lot of windows that were broken. I was devastated, but I was so angry. And I thought, now all of the money that they struggled to make during this pandemic is now got to go into fixing something that they did not do. In fact, in the Castro, there was one person who vandalized all five of those windows that were broken. In Chinatown, 20 businesses were vandalized. And thanks to the San Francisco Police Department, that one person that vandalized those 20 businesses has been arrested and is currently being detained in our jails. The fact is, we have to make sure that we are doing everything we can in this city to hold people accountable for the crimes that they commit. But we never want those crimes to happen in the first place. And if they do, we have to stand by our small businesses. We have to provide the relief and the support that they need because it's not just about the business owner and their livelihood, it's also their employees who are supporting families themselves. It's a big deal. And so in San Francisco, we've tried to be very creative about the programs that we have instituted, um, especially since this pandemic. We've been able to give out a significant amount of resources for grants, for loans, for facade improvements, for uh, people who are dealing with challenges, we know that that little bit of money goes a long way. And so with our SF Shines programs and a number of things, we've been able to help support small businesses. And in addition to that, just recently, the Board of Supervisors supported an effort to, for the next year, provide uh, for those who want to open new businesses in San Francisco, we're able to waive a number of city fees that oftentimes are very expensive and make it difficult to open a business because we know we have far too many empty storefronts. So we have to get rid of the bureaucracy like we did when voters passed Prop H, thank you so much, and our small business recovery efforts, which you know we are hoping that businesses notice a difference. And just to be clear, for someone who may want to, and I'm sure you probably heard about this, change a nail shop to an ice cream bar or shop, it should not take almost two years to do something that simple. We must do better. But there's the other part of what we talked about. A bakery recently was vandalized. A pharmacy ran shacked and windows broken. And here at Footprint, they faced two cases of vandalism. Frank's flowers burned to the ground. All these incredible places that are institutions in our city. And I want to thank Supervisor Marr for working with us to establish this new program, this Vandalism Relief Fund, 
that will provide anywhere between one and two thousand dollars to those who need to provide repairs to fix their businesses. We allocated a million dollars in the budget to do that because we know that there are so many businesses who have experienced this. And to be clear, this is one of so many of the programs that we try to offer to help support and protect our small businesses. There is not a one size fits all. And San Francisco is an expensive city. But I'm really proud of the fact that we continue time and time again to look at creative ways to invest in small businesses because they are the driving engine of San Francisco. And we can't just keep talking about it and then adding more layers of bureaucracy to make life difficult for them. We have to make changes to our policies. We have to make changes to our investment. We have to do that because we need to see a change in the city we all know and love, which is built on the backs of small businesses. So I want to thank you all so much for being here. And I'm just really excited that Footprints uh, is a beneficiary because of the challenges that they experience. And I'm looking forward to making sure that at least 500 businesses, I think, will benefit from this program. And hopefully, we won't need to use all of it. Um, and with that, I want to take this opportunity to introduce our partner in this effort, uh, Supervisor Gordon Marr. Thank you so much, Mayor Breed, and actually everyone for being here for this um, announcement of, of the Storefront Vandalism Relief Grant Program. Actually, <clears throat> Yeah, I'm really um, pleased to be here along with Mayor Breed, um, the Office of Economic and Workforce Development, D uh, Director Sophis, um, Assessor Recorder, um, Joaquin Torres, and people of Parkside and Sunset, our, our really wonderful uh, merchant association here on, on Terraval, um, to re announce this important, really very important new um, program that the city is starting to provide um, economic relief and support to our mom and pop, pop businesses that have been um, victimized by property crime during the pandemic. Um, unfortunately, that's a lot of businesses um, throughout the city and, and particularly in our residential neighborhoods. Um, during the pandemic, we've just seen a, a, a surge in, in um, vandalism and, and burglaries, in particular targeting our neighborhood businesses in our neighborhoods. Um, here in the Sunset District, um, there, there have been dozens of, of businesses that have been um, victimized, um, including not just Footprint, but here on the Terraval Ter Ter Corridor. Um, um, foam tea house right on this block was vandalized three times, um, and, and, a num and many other businesses, Ant Antigua Coffee, um, Mr. Bread Bakery, um, Sugar and Water Dessert Cafe were all burglarized. Um, and and we've, we've seen this play out on our other commercial corridors in the sunset on Noriega, Twisted Donuts, and, and the crew, um, Korean restaurant were burglarized. And then over on Irving, many businesses have also been hit um, from Pineapple King Bakery to Sun Maxim Bakery to Nomad Cyclery. And then most recently, and I think it's gotten a lot of, um, gotten some, some attention, Frank's Florist, um, an 87-year-old business, historic business on, on Irving and 19th Avenue that was not only burglarized, but was burned out last week. So um, I actually want to really thank um, Michael Shu, the owner of Footprint Shoe Store here, um, for um, actually suggest, for, for first suggesting um, the, the creation of this program. Um, I remember when I came to visit Michael um, after Footprint was burglarized twice in, in one night um, in February of this year. And, um, and, and talking to him about his, his efforts to, to recover, recover. He, um, Michael told, mentioned that it'd be helpful to, to owners like him that, that have suffered these losses to have a little bit of financial support you know, from the city in, in their recovery. And um, whether it's to, to repair the broken windows or, or damage to the storefront, to pay their um, insurance deductible, or to, to beef up their security systems to, to prevent try to, to, to help hopefully prevent um, crime impacting them in the future. So from that conversation I had with Michael back in February, um, I, I, I started working with my staff and colleagues on the board. And, and in June, I did propose um, a budget appropriation of a million dollars so that we could create um, a fund to provide financial relief to small businesses impacted by property crime. And I want to thank Mayor Breed and OEWD for, um, for working with my office um, to, over the past three months to actually create this program. So I know, um, um, you know we, we are hopefully going to be able to provide support to um, at least 500 businesses through this program, but the need is even greater 
And um, so we're going to look at how we could um, expand the pot. And I, actually, in the budget, I think there, there's an additional, some additional funds in this year's budget that I, I, I think we, we can use to expand the pot if, if there is a, is a great demand for this program, which I think there will be. And, but I think beyond that, um, this is just providing relief um, you know, to the businesses and supporting them in, in their recovery. But we really need to look at how we could prevent what, what steps the city can take to really prevent these types of crimes um, impacting our small businesses. And um, so that's something I'm very committed to. I know Mayor Breed and, and Chief Scott in, in the police department, and along with um, Captain Rainsford and the Terrell Station, um, the good, good folks here at the Terrell Station are committed to as well. And um, I'm gonna be holding a hearing um, in October in the Public Safety and Neighborhood Services Committee on, on what we can do as a city to, to um, address crime in our commercial corridors and ensure safety um, for our businesses and residents. So, um, so that'll be an opportunity to really look at how we can um, prevent this types of crime from happening in the future. But today we're, we're really here to announce yeah, the, the launch of this important new program. And I wanna actually now introduce um, Michael Shu. He's a Sunset native and he actually took over um, this footprint shoe store from the, the previous owners, the Lee family, um, just before the pandemic kicked in. So I really want to thank Michael for his commitment to keeping this business, important business going in the neighborhood and serving the community. And, um, and, and again, for, for, for suggesting um, that we create the storefront vandalism re relief program. Thank you. Thank you, uh, everyone, for coming out. Um, first of all, it's an honor to be here, and I want to thank the city leaders, Supervisor Marr, Mayor Breed, for taking time and putting this program and their entire teams and everybody that's behind the scenes, putting this uh, grant together so small businesses can come out of this. Um, I want to thank Captain Rainsford and the Parkside Station. After uh, we, our store got vandalized, Captain Rainsford reached out to me personally and was along my side to help me get through just all the insurance handling process. So him and his team were there for us. Thank you. The pandemic, it's been, um, for me, never even knew what a pandemic was. Um, when, when I took over the business, I was very excited to start. And then two weeks later, we were told that we had to close. I was like, we had no idea what that meant. But um, I think something that's positive that has come out of the pandemic is community. Um, I think without the pandemic, this would have never happened. You guys wouldn't have been here. So I definitely see that this is a positive that will come out of this, uh, you know, COVID-19. And I look forward to continue to engage with the community, um, with all the city leaders to help small businesses. Small businesses, like London Breed says, and I'm a San Franciscan. I grew up um, just a few blocks away from the store. I shop and eat at, at all the neighborhood stores. And it's very sad to see them struggling. So, but I do believe if we come together with the help of this grant for the stores that got vandalized, we'll be able to come out stronger and more united as a whole together. Um, now I wanna introduce people of Parkside. Grace, come up. Hi, my name is Grace Garza and I uh, am with Carlin Company Hair Studio. Uh, we've been there 30 years and um, I'm also a member of, um, I'm vice president of uh, Terrible Merchants Association, People of Parkside Sunset. And I just wanna take a moment to thank uh, uh, Supervisor Marr for helping push through this relief bill and also for, to Mayor Breed for signing the bill and pushing it through. Um, it's very much needed. We've been in much, um, had many, many challenges here along Terraville, you know, the uh, construction, the pandemic, and now we have crime. So it is um, good to have relief and help from the city in these very, very hard times. So just want to thank you, Supervisor Marr and Mayor Breed. And also, I guess I'm the last speaker, so we're all available for questions if you have any questions for the speakers. Hi, yes, uh, Alex Ferreira, San Francisco Business Times. Um, I just, uh, I saw that the, um, uh, the release was saying that uh, the, the grants aren't to cover um, uh, uh, damage or uh, stolen goods or um, uh, shared spaces. Does that mean parklets? I just wanted to clarify. Well, for the van this is a vandalism relief fund, so it is for 
sadly, people who have been victimized. Um, there are specific um, requirements that we have. So for example, if you've been vandalized, we would ask that you um, report it to the police. And so we want to make sure that there's a police report and receipts for the expenses. Um, and if you are a victim of graffiti, for example, call 311 to report it. And as long as we have receipts for the expenses related to that, we can uh, provide the relief today. Um, we brought the checks from, for uh, footprints for uh, not just the vandalism relief fund for what he had to, to deal with, but also for SF Shines. Uh, and the less questions you ask, the more we can spend time shopping to spend even more money in his good store. Uh, I'm not sure if this Christian? Yeah, I'm not sure if this is for the mayor or for the supervisor, but what all does this encompass? And when we're talking vandalism, we're talking broken glass, graffiti, you talked about it a moment ago. What does this, this cover, and does yeah. this work in conjunction with the broken glass? Okay, so just to be clear, it is any, time, any vandalism related to anything that you would need to make a police report for the vandalism on your store, and it could also include graffiti, and oftentimes people don't necessarily um, make police reports for graffiti, but they call 311. So I think that if you've been vandalized and something has been damaged as a result and needs to be fixed uh, because of the vandalism, that's what it encompasses. And the uh, money from the, um, the broken windows fund can also be used as a tool as well. So um, for example, say if you had a broken window and then you also, as a result, have a desire to put in cameras and other systems to enhance and protect your store, um, there's possible support through these various programs to do that with, of course, a cap on the amount that we're able to provide. The vandalism relief fund is capped at $2,000 at this time. Captain, you want to talk a little bit about that today? So um, we made an arrest recently, and it was a series of vandalisms that was occurring um, in the Chinatown uh, business corridors, and it was also occurring up and down Ocean Avenue. So um, from the investigation in that arrest, what we were able to learn is that it was basically one person that was responsible for upwards of 30 or 40 incidents. So, in, and in that case, um, we do know, um, based on interviewing that person too, um, that it was prejudice-based. So there was, there was vandalism involved, but it was um, driven by prejudice. And, you know, again, 30 to 40 incidents um, is quite a, quite a lot of incidents and across, you know, multiple police districts. So, um, Hopefully, you know, that arrest in and of itself will reduce a lot of these incidents. Mm -hmm. just kind of today's press conference. All right, feel free to shop if you want, <laughs> but thank you all so much for being here.